and welcome to the Knitting Samurai Plus One video podcast. This is episode 51. Small wonders. <laughs> I'm your host, Steph, also known as the Knitting Samurai. And uh, Mac is trying to get to the camera right now, so you may see an error. <laughs> welcome. So it is April 20th. A uh, rainy, rainy, rainy Saturday morning. I've been up for uh, going on three hours, although I can't see the clock from here because no glasses. Close, no, two hours. It's 8 o'clock. 8 a.m. And uh, the row monster is still asleep, so we're going to see how far I get into this. So you may see me for a while, and then you may see me during the afternoon nap. Might be a two-part episode, but let's jump in. Um, I'm calling this week's episode Small Wonders because... There, oh, there's a squirrel in back here. <laughs> the cats are both, see, the new couch is a chaise, has a chaise over here. And so the boys are sitting on it and looking out the uh, glass door, watching a squirrel try in the rain to climb the farmer's crook hook thing out in the garden that we have a bird feeder hanging on. Yeah, he's just like jumping and sliding and jumping. It's very, very entertaining if you're a cat. Anyways, um, Lots of things came off the needles this week. Holy cow. So, uh, I'm going to follow follow my notes. Follow the notes. Uh, first, this did not come off the needles, but I do have some progress to show you. So, I wanted to start a new pair of striping socks, just to carry along in the for the purse knitting. Uh, <clears throat> my socks are typically, if you've been on watching the show for a while, you know, two by two rib toe up construction. So <clears throat> it's basically the generic sock pattern I follow for every pair of self striping socks I knit. Um, I cast on with the Inspiration Dye Works yarn that I bought a few weeks back. I don't know if I shared that with you. So this is her Doth Stripe colorway. I really love it. As you can see, I think I knit this in two days, this much of it, and then I put it down and went on to other things. But I cast on um, using a US 1.5, 2.5 millimeter needle, and then right about here, I believe it was, I went down to a size 1. So it was a little, the fabric was a little too loose for me. This is a 7525 Superwash wool nylon yarn. Um, I can't say enough good things about it. I really like working with it. I think the color saturation is gorgeous. Kind of matches what I'm wearing today, huh? Um, yeah, I am super anxious to see. So I've knit with some hand dye. Ooh, ooh, I had to trim that. The, the, one of the plies split right there. Um, I've knit with some hand dyed sock yarn before from, how do I say this? Company, or individuals, indie dyers that were not super well known. And I've had the color just, you know, they're gorgeous like this. And then you wash them and you're like, no! So, um, just they look like a very pale, washed out version of themselves. So, I am fingers crossed because I've never used this yarn before and I think I just stumbled across her on Etsy. I don't think I've, I've heard too many reviews of it. So, fingers crossed that I will knit with this and it'll be color fast and these will be my new favorite socks and I will wear them everywhere all the time because they are gorgeous. So, um, this was my crack knitting for early last week or like, I think I recorded on the 10th, and I cast these on and knit like crazy for two days. And then I decided that, okay, it's time, it's really time to finish those things that I had been talking about finishing. So, the uh, Croy stripe socks, so these were the stripe socks that finished, that opened up my needles. Look at this. This is ridiculous. I know. This is the price you pay for using striping yarn and being anal. So I have 11 ends to weave in on this sock because I wanted to make sure that it matched the first sock. And so I kept breaking and changing my yarn. It's, the, it's because I'm doing a toe up, uh, I believe it's a slip, I know it's a slip stitch heel. I don't know if you call it gusseted, I don't think so. I think you just call it a slip stitch heel so that the, you know, each row uses progressively more yarn as you do the increases through this section, right? It uses more yarn. And so I started, because I'm like this, 
um, a second section of the color to try and keep them from getting so the stripes are about four inches wide let me let me back up and explain the color strip sections are about four rows not inches four rows wide and so through this increase section which is really hard to show I guess that's probably the best way so you can see the width of the foot as you're knitting and then it gets wider up here um, so as you're increasing through here the stripes would go down to probably two rows a piece and I don't like that so I broke off got a second a set of yarn that matched up color wise and added that in so to keep them at about I think the red right there is about five rows wide which is fine but to keep the stripe width similar to what it was instead of having them go from four 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 to three three two 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 three three four four does that make sense hey lie so I did that but <clears throat> in doing that you get this beautiful finished product and you know, the heel, and I kept my striping sequence the same in the front color-wise, so I didn't use up for the heel flap. You know, if you've knit striped socks, you know what I'm talking about here. So I did that, and yay, it looks gorgeous. Um, but yeah, all these crazy ends to weave in because I wanted to make sure I did that. Had what I wanted, and oh my god. So one of them is all woven in, the other one is not. But they're finished, dang it. These are finished, and... Um, if I line them up at the top, they're they're very close on the front, the back, the heels color, the navy is a little off. My grandmother will not care. I am calling these finished except for the weaving, which, you know, doesn't count for knitting. So of the two skeins, that's how much I had left of the Patton's Croy. I can see a stripy dinosaur in my future with that. Um, yeah. Hey, we're through two projects and he still hasn't woken up. So today is Saturday and it's Swimming Lessons Day. I think we talked about Swimming Lessons last time. And um, so that would have been like the eighth class that we went to last Saturday. And he, um, it's like it all just clicked for him. You know, we got into the great gradated ramped section and he was crying. He didn't want to be there for sure. But I would ask him questions like, do you want to go stand by that orange pole? Or do you want to go stand by the red slide? And he would say, <laughs> yes. And then he'd go trudging in. And he wasn't, it didn't notice that as he was walking, he ended up in the water up to his chest. And then once it clicked that he could splash, and I would laugh, and it would be fun, it was like, <sighs> pull out all the stoppers. And he cried for about, I want to say 5% of the class, like the first very beginning of, you know, let's get into the water. And after that, he was fine, perfectly fine, laughing, happy. I had no idea, so he weighs 30 pounds, how exhausting it is to go to a 30 minute swim class and lift that 30 pound weight up and hold him and do things because he spent every class prior up on my neck trying to get out of the water. So. He had a great class, and he did Dead Man's Float twice. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It was like he had been paying attention and learned all the things um, from the previous classes, but just wouldn't do them. So, you know, splashing, kicking, floating, paddling, reach and pull, reach and pull, reach. He did it all. I, I was just blown away. Blown away. He went from being like screaming, embarrassing kid in the class to being like, I can do everything. Here I go. So I was so excited I cried. <laughs> we traded and cried, but it was good. Very good. And that segues into, look at this, a finished, it doesn't segue at all. In no way is that related to this. <laughs> a finished hat. I know. I know. I didn't think it would happen either. Of course, ends are not woven in. We stayed up late last night listening to alternating watching Game of Thrones and listening to what was going on down in Boston. And of course our my heart and thoughts are with those people, all of those people, everyone who's been touched by this event. Um, Steve didn't know the BU student, but it just hits home. I mean she was a graduate student in the business department, which is where what he's part of. So yeah. And lots of his friends live in Watertown, and it was just, he was uh, very upset yesterday, of course, as I'm sure all the people in Boston are. So, anyways, I don't want to talk about that, but we were up late, and I'm, you know, anxiety gets your fingers going faster, at least it does for me. So, I finished my pebble beanie. 
Um, it took me, I was looking at when I cast on, it took just over like two months and a week to finish this. It is knit on, <clears throat> let me read here, um, US size 2.53 millimeter needles. It is using Schaefer Nicole, um, Schaefer Nicole in the Empress Zhao colorway, Wu Zhao. It is an 80-20 Learn, in case you were wondering, uh, wool nylon, and I have to tell you a few things about this, right? So, this is out of the Weekend Hats book. I'm not going to put it on because my hair is wet and pinned. Pinned, and if I put on the hat, the pins, it's just not good. Um, really interesting stitch pattern, very slow to knit, very well written pattern, but um, and to get my speed up, I ended up bludgeoning myself. So <laughs> both my thumb and finger have uh, poke marks and bloody spots. <laughs> I know, right? For the love of knitting, my God. Yeah, I was working very careful to like twist my ankle so that, you know, there was a, a prick over here, so make sure to hit over there instead. But um, I know I'm not selling you on this pattern. That's by Elizabeth Parker, Pebbled Beanie. Um, I think it's the least patterned, least projects in the book, or it's one of the fewer ones. One of the, you guys contacted me to say, oh, I'm curious to know what you think of it. It's like the only one in the book I haven't knit. I think it's beautiful. I love the end result. I wish my yarn didn't pool. That would be, or flash, whatever that is, so you get the stripes of black. It doesn't really show when it's on. And I can wear it slouchy if I let this, the ribbing, unfold so that's cool too so it's kind of like a dual hat um, beautiful heavy very heavy weight because you're basically the way the stitches are constructed you're knitting three rows in the space of two basically um, and that makes for very heavy yarn I used no I I didn't weigh it I bet I used three quarters of a skein of a 400 yard skein like it eats a lot of yarn. Um, what else do I have to tell you about it? Interesting decreases on the top. I don't know. I like it. I will never knit this pattern again. Never, ever, ever. No fault of how it's written, just the construction isn't for me. So I'm waiting for my fingers to heal. But it's done and it's off the needles and I never thought that would happen. Ah! Okay. <laughs> um, the Grace and the Peasy. And so the two sweaters I'm working on, the pink one and the green one, I didn't touch either in these past few days because I was so focused on getting through some of these small wonders, getting through some small projects. I really was focused in on working on those things. So um, <clears throat> I want to show you, introduce you to someone who is very happy to be here. <laughs> so this is my Chadwick the Shakespearean Caterpillar by Rebecca Danger. It's knit with Knit Picks Felici. I, I think all, all I had to do was assemble and sew on a face. So I did embroidery. I don't really like the way his eyes came out. I, it, it looks cuter on her. Her virgin looks cuter, but this is for a newborn, so couldn't have any eyes. Uh, the pipe cleaner's in it, so he's sort of, not really, poseable. Uh, his, I shortened the segments and so his arms are super, super long because I didn't think to shorten the arms up, but that's okay. He can do fun things like that or wrap his arm over his head and touch his other shoulder. So Chadwick is done. Yay! Um, I will say of the nitpicks, this is the Felici Sport. I started at the bottom. I thought I heard a noise. Started at the bottom, finished at the top. And the bottom is already a little pilly, so I'm going to need to use my little defuzzer tool on that before I give it to someone. So, just heads up on that. Um, I thought I was hearing a noise, but apparently I'm not, so I'm just going to keep trudging along. So, you know how I talked about the uh, dinosaur blanket? I'm not going to bring it up. Dinosaur's blanket, so I'm knitting this dinosaur out of four different Rebecca Danger patterns. I'm putting them all together so that I can get the result I want. And so here's where I'm at. Here's my little dinosaur so far. 
So he is um, knit on US size 1, 2.25 millimeter needles. The feet are her Harold the House Plant Monster. The legs are Dot, the Dress Up Box Monster. The body is Terrence the T-Rex, but I shortened him. So Terrence is like a, for this size needle, she predicts that it'll be a 16 inch tall monster. I don't want him to be 16 inches tall. So I decreased a lot faster. And I did do some increases, oh yeah, did do some increases to give his belly this, you know, that bow out and a little bit on his bum to give him that. Um, very smart construction, so we'll go back. It's like an afterthought tail. Um, let's see what else. I've started on his head. So the dinosaur is wearing his PJs, and I knit the legs up to the point, the point of joining. I knit one of them and then I, in the green, and then I was like, he doesn't have his PJs on. Dinosaur has to have his PJs on. Plus, I have this whole big skein of Cascade, the red, so I wanted to make sure to use it, and I only have a little bit of leftovers for the green, so I didn't want to, you know, waste it. Um, so I ripped back and then put it back together. What else can I tell you about him? I really, I'm really pleased with how he's coming out. I love how pudgy he is because the dinosaur, okay, I'm bringing him up. <laughs> the dinosaur is very pudgy. Um, let's see, what else? Mm, I'm trying to think. Oh, I also, so the fourth pattern that's going to be incorporated into the dinosaur is um, Sherman the Stegosaurus for his um, scales. Scales? What are those things called on the back? I don't know. But there's, there's our dinosaur. Hopefully you can see it. And that's how he's coming up. He's a little taller. A little taller. Legs are a little longer, but whatever. <laughs> I don't think my little guy is going to care. In fact, I think he'll be stoked. And I was thinking about, so this is definitely for Roland. I tell hold on to him and play with it. I'm going to sew the ShamWow cloth to the dinosaur's hand so that he always has his big kit with him. Um, but I was thinking when Roland outgrows this and is no longer interested, it might be nice to give the um, Miss Sharon at daycare who introduced us to the book to give her the dinosaur so she can share it with loads and loads and loads of kids. And I said that to my mom and my mom was like, why wouldn't you just knit her one? Or why don't you knit four of them and give them with the books and the dinosaur to all of your coworkers that are pregnant? And I was like, are you kidding? Do you know how much work this is? I know I've gone a long way in a week, but is no. <laughs> this is, <clears throat> I love my boy enough to do this, not, you know, for the rest of the world. So. I think that <clears throat> that could make a good home for him at daycare when, when we're through with him. Unless, of course, there's a second little <clears throat> knitting samurai running around and then we would have to keep it for that one. But <clears throat> that is a long ways off. Oh, and did you see? I'm using my zigzag stitches back. I really like it. Um, so that, I think, is all that's on the needles. I do want to show you I bought a new pattern. Since that hat is finished, I've got my sights on my next hat, so I'm thinking about knitting the Drizzle, Drizzle hat, by Mel Emsky Knits, so you know her from the Single Handed Knits podcast. Um, the yarn I'm considering using, oops, not what I meant to pull out, is either, uh, two choices, so maybe if you see this and you have a, a strong opinion, you will tell me. Um, I'm thinking of the Cash Vera DK Cascade Yarn, so that's a cashmere wool acrylic blend. Super soft. That acrylic, I mean, I know we don't like to knit with acrylic, but there will be no itch factor in this because the acrylic's going to make it just lay flat and none of those little scales are going to escape. Or Three Irish Girls Kel Sport Merino in the Giving Tree colorway. So I really like the little bit of variation in that, that the green that you see. And the Giving Tree, such a nice story. Um, I don't know which would look better. So this is really a lacy hat. That's probably a better picture of, of the detail of it. So it's really a lacy hat, um, slouchy kind of hat. And I think the variegation will look really pretty in that. But I also, like, I like the hat because it's gray. A gray hat goes with everything. So I'm leaning more towards this. But we'll see. It is a DK weight pattern, and this is a sport, so I might be hard-pressed to 
to use it. I'm just gonna I'm just yeah, and it's fine. I'll probably use this. So look for that in the coming weeks. Uh, and then I got new yarn. So I joined the um, whatever the Gales Art Yarn Club is. I don't remember what they called it, I'm sorry. But it's Gales Art Knitting Color and a Third Dyer. Very bad information wise. I joined their yarn club. I got my first shipment. And the first one comes from uh, Knitting and Color. And the colorway is Royal Grandma Fish. Now, I don't know if you can see that. But it is a perfect match to this yarn. So the yarn has, I think it's a, what is it? And the colorway is called Not Your Grandma's Yarn. So it's kind of cool that it's the Royal Grandma Fish. But it is, no, it doesn't say on there. Oh, it just says Merino Nylon Selena. And it has navy for the contrasting, toes and heels. And I really like it. Like, I don't know that I'll knit socks out of this, but... I was thinking I would cast something up on right away. It arrived yesterday and I was like, ooh, that's so, so pretty. Just crazy. So, we'll see. I don't know. I don't know. Um, and lastly, in my bag of tricks over here, I have some stitch markers. New hide and sheep stitch markers. And I just have to tell you, I probably shouldn't tell you, but... Uh, she makes several, I think it's a husband and wife team, several, several, several kinds, but my absolute favorite of hers are the needle hunters. And those are, they're basically, I'll try. We'll see if we can get you to see. No, that's not a good mark of contrast. Maybe this? No, this. There. Okay. So they are shaped um, loops with little beads dangling off them. Absolutely snag free. They're on most of my projects. Um, but I had, when I went crazy by buying them, I probably bought a hundred different, you know, different stitch markers. <clears throat> and um, I was a big sock knitter at the time. And for socks, you, I was using one stitch marker per. And so I just had this huge stash collection of uh, stitch markers for like size three or smaller and needles and so I've I had a handful of larger ones so I'm glad to have these because they they fit like a five or a six so and they're eight in a set eight in a, no six in a set so good for sweater knitting so yay so that's hide and sheep hide and sheep dot net so check her out I have loved their stitch markers for years 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 so there that's it that's not it Let's talk about my goals for 2013. Here's an update. yarns I have to say that I have knit with I have completed 7% of that goal and knit with one to make the pie shawl baby blanket um, the one vest two baby blankets three Christmas stockings I think that's the one that's least likely to get completed at this point because we're into almost into May and I've only done um, one baby blanket out of those six things so I am 17% through with that goal but the, so again, the, the pie shawl baby blanket counts for that. Knit with 13 self-striping yarns, <laughs> which means socks to me. Um, I have knit the vanilla bean socks, the 716 striping socks for my cousin Stacy, the first pair of Croy socks that were like the red brown, and now the second pair of Croy socks for my grandmother. So I have done four out of 13, so about 31% of that done. Hey, hey, I'm on track. Um, and I've got the the goth socks in progress, so that's good. The Knit With 13 pattern from Books, 
patterns from the books I received for Christmas. I have done the Wilted Took, the Pebbled Beanie, and then two Arbutus, so that makes our... Arbutus? That makes, um... Are you chewing on that? Please stop chewing on that. Sorry. Cat reprimanding. That makes four out of 13 completed there. And then uh, 13 sweaters. I've done two. The Harvest Moon and the Dark and Stormy. And I have to tell you, I wore my Dark and Stormy this weekend. Every time I wear it, I think to myself, God, I love this sweater. So thank you for making me knit it because I really didn't, I had no interest in knitting it to be honest. I was like, oh, okay, that's what they picked. We'll knit it. And I went out and bought the Cascade yarn and I didn't really like that yarn, you know, like dark navy and brown mauve is just not something you want to knit a sweater's quantity of, at least for me. And I pushed with the deadline and I got it done and I love it. I love it. So thank you. Um, I think that's all I have, unless you want a progress report from on the row. I guess I can do that too. Oh, and I don't think we have any video for this week of him. Maybe this will be instead of video. He had his 18 month checkup, but it's a little late, so he's 19 and a half months, but they could still chart him compared to everyone else. And he's doing great. He, uh, we actually had an autism test, and he passed it with flying colors. No autism, so that's good. Uh, is officially off the charts for everything except weight. So right now he's 30 and a half pounds and that puts him at about the 90th percentile. Um, height and head circumference are both off the charts so he is a big little guy. He's growing very fast. He's um, 36 inches tall. I know that's very tall. That's three feet. That's, you know, if he's going to be six feet tall, which is about what Steve is, then he's halfway there. <laughs> I was quite impressed with this last night, and um, Steve and some of our friends were like, okay, he's halfway there. I'm like, he's only 19 months old, and he's half grown. Like, that's crazy when you think about it like that. So, I know. It's big. Oh, message. He's going to continue to slow down his growth rate, but he did just go through a massive growth spurt and grew, I think, two inches between last visit and this. Um, Steve and the doctor were both like, whoa, that's really fast. Lots of progress right there. So, um, and I was real wrangling at the time, so I didn't really get fully into the conversation. So, yeah, so he's tall and he's happy and he's crazy and I love him. <laughs> and I think it's about time for him to get up. It's going on 8.30 and we have to go to the swimming lessons in, at 10 o'clock. So... Um, I hope you have a great 10 days or so until I talk to you again. Enjoy what's going on in your knitting world and take care. All right. Bye. You need to do it.